Hey, it's Tara, and today I'm going to review Paolo Bacigalupi's The Water Knife, published last month, actually. The Water Knife depicts southwest U.S. in the near future. Deadly drought has rendered the southwest nearly uninhabitable, and a lack of resources has created a sort of fend-for-yourself policy among the southwest U.S. states that require people to get visas to travel between the states in the U.S. Uh, Texas has completely toppled, and refugees have flooded Phoenix. Um, of course, Phoenix isn't that much better off, uh, run by mob bosses and ripped apart by prejudice-induced violence. Uh, in this future, water is power. So the main characters are Angel, aka the man who does the dirty work, to Catherine Case, um, who is the brilliant mind behind the Southern Nevada Water Authority, uh, Lucy, the privileged journalist from the North who has adopted and adapted to Phoenix for better or worse, and Maria, the Texan refugee who just wants to get out. So let's talk about the good, the bad, and the ugly. First, the good. There is a lot going on here. Um, there's the macro politics of a country that's divided by the haves and have-nots, and then the politics and morally questionable machinations of all the water companies trying to stay on top. The micro politics of Phoenix itself between the government, its corrupt cops, and the criminal gangs and their underlings. There's segregation based not so much on skin color as where you're from, Texans being the most despised for horning in on Phoenix's already much depleted water supplies. And then there are the personal and moral values and ambigu ambiguities for each of the main and supporting characters. The cast itself is large and diverse, and everyone has their own motivations. There are no cardboard cutouts here. And there are plenty of twists and turns to sort of keep you on your toes, even if some of them are a little contrived. On to the bad. Speaking of motivations, things get a little bit dicey when there's some insta-love going on between two of the characters, which causes cracks in the character's consistency for me, but it wasn't enough to break it. Um, and this isn't a true bad, but uh, he uses a lot of facts and data about climate change and law and things like that um, that I couldn't always follow, so I did skim those a bit. If you're into more like hard science and, uh, I don't know, you study law, then maybe this will be easier for you. And on to the ugly. This is not a pretty book. Bocce Galoobies never are. It's full of grit and gore and dirt and the dregs of humanity. But as always with his work, there are gems underneath the filth, um, with little peaks of beauty amidst the grime. And this is my favorite thing about Bocce Galoobie. His pictures are always so bleak, but there's always a very, very faint, at least a very, very faint silver lining going on. Um, I wouldn't recommend this book if you can't handle things dirty and morally questionable um, and kind of gory at times, but if you can, this one will make you think. If any of you has read The Water Knife, I would absolutely love to hear what you think. Um, he's an author that not many of my friends and acquaintances ever really read, maybe because they read The Wine of Girl and they weren't very impressed with it, which is understandable. I wasn't very impressed with it either, but I do love his style. So if you have read him, I'm looking for a kindred spirit or someone who completely disagrees and thinks that his work is terrible. That's also fine. I'm curious to know what you think about him um, and specifically this book if you have read it. So leave me a message below if you have, but other than that, until next time.